Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Okay, good. Hello, my name is Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson, and welcome to the North Town News Magazine. For the identity of the real Marty Levinson, please stay tuned to the North Town News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the North Town News Magazine show with the greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, North Town Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Tell us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. Community Policing Caps 24.org. Community Policing is alive and well in the 24th District, and um, we are big fans. Uh, we also remind you that National Night Out is the first Tuesday in August. And if we get a chance, maybe we'll discuss a little bit of it with our guest here, um, who is one of the few members of the Chicago Police Department I am privileged to be able to have on the show. And I want to thank you very much for coming here. And um, sorry about this. Um, usually, no, 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 keep going. Keep I'm, going. I'm going. So, um, I'd like you to introduce you to one of the highest ranking Jewish people on the police force. Uh, not just, I don't know if he's still officially the commander in, in, the, in the 14, but I know he is the, uh, the liaison to the Department of Justice about the current police probe, you know, going on about the city of Chicago. And uh, it's funny because I watched, the last thing I watched last night was a show called Better Call Saul where all the cops in this precinct were dirty and they dealt with that whole situation. But that was TV, people. TV won't tell you a <laughs> thing about real cops. I've had many policemen tell me that the only realistic police show they've ever watched was Barney Miller. Think about that. Anyway, it is a pleasure to introduce you to uh, Commander Mark Buslick. How uh, you doing? Good, how are you? Thank you for having me back. First of all, thank you, and I, I'm glad you could talk. And you sure. really are, you're a, you're a go-to guy right now. Okay. Uh, uh, well, you know, I'm happy let, about that. You're, you're at, this. This is one of the biggest deals going. I, I mean, you're talking about. You know, I, I read plenty of articles that that you've already talked about. We talked about it a little bit at the Jewish Fest too. Right. But just touching on it. But but basically, why don't you give us a little bit of the background of the probe, and uh, what your role is, and sure. plus the tightrope you got to walk. Sure. Uh, a little history. The idea that the Justice Department would investigate uh, a police department or, or any criminal justice organization uh, goes back to the Rodney King beating. Um, uh, after the Rodney King beating, uh, it was determined that the LAPD had some systemic problems. And Congress uh, passed a law, 42 U.S.C. 14141, which authorized the Justice Department to investigate police and other uh, agencies. Um, the purpose of which is to look for a pattern or practice of unconstitutional behavior. Uh, in the case of Chicago here, um, DOJ is looking for three uh, more specific things. They're looking at our use of force, they're looking at accountability, and they're looking at the broader unconstitutional practices. Um, we know that the Justice Department had been considering uh, uh, practices here in Chicago, but when the Laquan McDonald video was released, that, that contributed to their decision to come on into Chicago. I would think it probably contributed heavily, because I hate to say it, but usually it takes a major incident that catches everybody's eye and it becomes right. political. And, um, you know, the fact of the matter is you've got, what, 12 or 13,000 police officers in Chicago. If you get 12 or 13,000 priests or rabbis, if you were to get just about anything but angels, there's going to be a rotten egg in there somewhere. Or somebody right. who do, and even if it's not a rotten egg, Somebody who did the wrong thing at the wrong time, or somebody who, right. issued, who demonstrated bad judgment. 
Right, and, and the important thing is not um, just that there might be a rotten egg. The important thing is uh, whether or not the organization, the environment, supports these rotten eggs in such a way that it becomes systemic. And, and that's really what the Justice Department is interested in. You know, is there a pattern uh, uh, of these behaviors? Is it a practice of the organization to engage in these behaviors? And that's what their, their focus is. So right now, uh, in, in fact, just the other day, we received the fifth production request. Basically, they're asking for documents, uh, statistics, information about the organization. Uh, and they will go review all of that. Typically, their investigation takes about a year to 18 months. Um, it's difficult to say how long they're going to be here. This has been their uh, and will be their largest uh, pattern or practice investigation. Um, once they're done with that investigation, they'll produce a findings report. There'll be some negotiation between the city and the Justice Department over that. And then uh, it will be entered in, into federal court, um, uh, either in the form of an agreement a settlement agreement, or what's more likely would be a consent decree. A judge will oversee that. The city will have to hire an independent monitor to report back to the, to the federal court on the status of, of reforms or changes that the city has agreed to. And the fact of the matter is, I hate to say it, but just because the Justice Department uh, thinks that something is a good idea doesn't mean in practice it's going to work out in the least. And in theory, if they don't know what they're doing, which being a government entity is a definite possibility, you could actually wind up being in worse shape. Well, I, we hope um, that the kinds of things that we'll agree to will be forward-moving um, uh, changes. Uh, we see it as really an opportunity. There are a number of things that, that we have wanted to do over the years. That, that funding has been a, a roadblock, um, uh, politics has, has been a roadblock. So we see this as an opportunity to make the kinds of changes that, that we think are going to be positive moving forward. Uh, sure, there's always a risk that they will say, um, you know, we want you to do X, and we have to say, well, it's, it's not possible to do X. And there have been other agencies where that has happened. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it will be things that can be done. It, it will likely be expensive. Uh, Los Angeles, for instance, um, they uh, spent about $130 million wow. to, to you know, actually make the changes that they were required to change. So we're kind of using that as a target, maybe less, I don't think it'll really be more, uh, but we have some idea. This is not an inexpensive process. Well, not to date myself, but I do it all the time anyway, and this beard is white, even though the rest of it, thank God, ain't. Um, I, did, I was first a police reporter when I was in junior college. I was working for a paper in Lakeview, and I covered the town hall district, mm -hmm. talking over 40 years ago at this point. And uh, I had long hair. I was running as a delegate for Gene McCarthy, not in 68, that old I'm not. Um, and the commander introduced me to the other officers, saying that I was going to be the one covering for the local paper that did have, was very active in, in covering police stories in that time. He told them that just because I look like a long hair hippie, I work for this particular paper. I am not the enemy. I am to be considered a friend and treated as such. Well, good. And no, that was very nice. <laughs> but I, I will tell you something that since the 70s, um, and, and I've co I covered uh, the old Foster Avenue district, I've covered uh, over here in Rogers Park, I've covered some things in Evanston, I've covered 26th and Keo, other, other places. Um, there's a definite difference in the police department over the course of time. And there's a definite difference in society. And I find right now that more in, like in the old days, it, I, I'm not saying it was common, but I know somebody who'd get beat, I knew people who got beaten up because they were the wrong 
the wrong person in the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. Now, today, the fact is that I, I think the vast majority of the Chicago Police Department are really good, decent people that are looking to do the right things and want to do well and want to do good. But there it isn't, I mean, I, I see a problem with them being handcuffed right now. Some of these guys, and this has been going on for, for, a, for at least a couple of years now, they're afraid to, to do their job. Well, I, I, I would take some exception to that. I think... Um, oh, by the way, you can take exception to all of it. I'm not, <laughs> I don't take it personally, don't okay. worry. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think that we're necessarily handcuffed. I think that we're being held to um, a standard now that um, may be more restrictive, but that's that's what society... Oh, by the way, I, I didn't mean to say that you're handcuffed. I'm saying that people are handcuffing themselves. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know about that. I think uh, police officers are certainly uh, aware of the fact that... Um, they're going to be held more accountable, and so they're more cautious. Um, and I think that's reasonable. I don't want anybody being reckless in what they do. Um, you know, I don't think that there's any real concerted effort to uh, avoid responsibility, to avoid work. I think they're, they're certainly being cautious. Nobody and this has been said by the superintendent, by the mayor, uh, by the, the head of the patrolman's union, uh, nobody wants to be the next viral video. So, so everybody is a little more cautious. Um, the fact is uh, there have been times when officers have not been doing things the right way, and we have to make sure that that changes. It's very small numbers of people. Um, uh, but we have to make sure that we have things in place so that we train people properly, that we supervise them properly, and that when somebody does make a mistake or somebody does do something wrong, that we have uh, an appropriate mechanism to hold them accountable. I, I think we have an obligation um, to the taxpayers um, uh, as well as a moral obligation to do I that. like the moral yeah. obligation part. Yeah. That's one of the things I like about you. You actually got morals. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Abby. It is a compliment. I mean that as a compliment, yeah. especially in public yeah. life. Well, thank you. So, it, it, you know, it, are things different today than they were five, ten years ago? Um, uh, of course they are. I think society um, has different expectations for us. Um, this goes to the, the whole issue of police legitimacy. Do, does the public trust that their police force uh, is doing the right things the right way? And that's really what we're trying to accomplish here. It's, it's not an easy task. Um, it's not easy at all, uh, particularly with an agency as large as ours. Uh, but I think we will get it done. Um, also, it's not and, being a policeman yeah. is not an easy job. And, no. and I'll tell you, especially since I've been on all sides as a reporter and covered, you know, court, police, in general, and, and even as a beat facilitator, where I, I'm in more of a trusted role, um, I, I see things. I've seen things from so many different sides. It's just not. I give a lot of these guys credit for the patience that they've got. I could never do Police that. Police officers are fairly patient people, yes. <laughs> you, you have to be. Yes. Um, and that, that's so. a positive thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll agree with you. It's not an easy job. Uh, uh, but I, I, I rarely run into a police officer who was not capable of doing it, certainly acceptably, if not well. Um, and, you know, sometimes officers make mistakes, and we just have to make sure that, uh, you know, we don't repeat those mistakes. No, but I, I'll tell you in general, I think the quality, I, I like the quality of police today. You know, I'll tell you, I, I'd much rather listen to the music from the late 60s or the early 70s, but I'll, I'll take the police of today, yeah. you know, over the police of the late 60s and 70s any day of the week. I would agree with you there. Anyway, at this point, we're running out of time. I want to thank you very much. You're welcome. Commander Mark Bustick, I want to wish you a lot of luck with the Department of Justice. And I hope that um, for the good of the people of the city of Chicago, that things work out well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Well, we look forward to having you back soon. Absolutely. Uh, and don't forget, Nat, we didn't get a chance to talk about National Light. This is too rich a topic. Oh. I could have talked to him another three years. Okay. We'll get Bruce Ratner on next time, and we'll talk about it. Good. <laughs> Take care. Be well. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.